Maki. Welcome to Maki's Kitchen. I'm actually here to show you how to make Chinese dumplings and it's an easy meal that you could put on your noodles and it can be ramen noodles or it can be soba noodles or it can be just simply use some of the Chinese noodles. It's just a, a few easy steps and, and with, the, with the folding of the dumplings, I'm actually going to show you just one style of my favorite. There's actually many, many different ways to make a dump, to fold the dumplings. Um, I'm just going to start right now to show you the preparation work of how to make the fillings for the dumplings. All right, so I'm going to, some of them I've already pre-chopped like the ginger. So I'm going to show you how to chop these coriander up. These are coriander. First of all, we have to wash it and we remove the roots. So we remove the roots and we chop them in a small chunks. And I include all the stems as well. Now, what we want is actually mix them up and we just want a bunch. The rest will go onto the soup. And then we're going to add chives. We're going to cut some chives. And cut them into half. It's easier. They keep jumping. And cut them in smaller pieces. gives it a bit of aroma. Now, with the remainder, we can put some in the soup or leave it out. Now, we're going to use some of this ginger. I've actually peeled ginger, take the skin off, and then I chop, I chop them. I slice them first before I chop them into a smaller piece. The reason I chop them into smaller pieces is some people don't like a strong ginger taste. So I actually cut them really, really fine. And lengthwise, and some people might find it too hot, just to chop them into little smaller pieces. Okay, and I'm going to put this whole lot, probably take two tablespoons into one kilo of meat, minced pork, is what I've used because it's actually tastier, it's got all the fats, some fats of pork makes, give, that gives it the flavor. Now, why do I use soy sauce? It's because it sweetens it up, it's not just uh, salty. If you put all salt to flavor it, it just becomes salty. And I also use um, Lee Kong Kee's premium soy sauce. And it's a light soy sauce, don't use dark soy sauce. It tastes different. And I would also uh, put a lot of cracked pepper. Give it a bit of flavor. And I would also put some Himalayan salt. I don't use any other salt in my cooking other than Himalayan salt. They are not so salty, so I could be generous with the salt. Yeah, but actually, Himalayan salt actually brings the flavor um, of the food out, um, and I find that much more. Um, it makes my food taste delicious. Now, what we'll do is I will mix all the ingredients together, and I will put the eggs last. All the meat and the vegetable, the coriander, the chives, the soy sauce, salt, and Himalayan salt, all together then I will add an egg to bind them and it's best to use your hands so that they're well mixed okay now we're gonna actually show you how to fold the dumpling and this is one of my favorite out of there may be eight of them um, this is one of my favorite and the shape of it it looks like a Chinese old gold where back in those um, back in those days where they would use those as a way of payment for the goods and services okay and I suppose that's just uh, 
um, um, a way of remembering back my roots. Now, this is a type of dumpling rubber that you need to buy. It's actually a gyoza dumpling is what I use because um, there are many different kind of um, dumpling rubbers quality in the market and some of them are actually for frying like the wonton uh, wrappers but um, I tend to I prefer the gyoza wrapper because it doesn't fall apart very quickly so uh, I'm going to show you um, for one kilos of meat can approximately make 99 to 100 dumplings depending on the size of the dumpling that you make on each one of them but in my experience I actually could make 99 to 100 dumplings and the rest I freeze them so um, I'm going to show you how to make a few um, dumplings so first of all you might want to put some flour on the tray where you're going to place your dump folded dumplings it's just so that it doesn't stick I just tend to spread them around so the old dumplings that you fold doesn't stick to each and I've also prepared a, um, a bowl of water for you to for you to actually um, um, stick the dumplings together so it doesn't fall apart when you actually cook them all right other than that this um, these dumplings already have some of the starch so these are easy to peel these girls are dumpling they're a little bit thicker but they're nicer and nice and slippery it has a really nice good texture when you eat them now some of them they can actually have two in one so you have to be careful not to um, take two like this it's two in one so keep peeling them now one side has the flour so you keep that outside the one that doesn't have the flour is the one where you're going to put the filler so i use teaspoons because it's small enough size to put them in one scoop if you use a big tablespoon then you're going to have to learn how to portion them correctly so that they're all even not too big not too small so you scoop a, a teaspoon you kind of shape them and you put a water all around the wrapper just a tiny little ones and you fold them into half and press it down so it will stay close and you can stretch them so that it looks even and create a little pouch and then fold the two ends together and stick there you go what it looked like and you can just keep making these I boil the noodles first okay a lot, some of the noodles is not starchy so I bought um, this type of noodles it's a buckwheat that you can get in a mini so or Daiso or Asian store buckwheat are healthier now what I did was I boiled the noodles, I took, I took it out, I sliced some mushrooms and the stock has no taste at the moment so what you need is actually put some mushroom base into it. I'm going to leave some for evening vegetable, for our evening vegetable. Now, bring to boil. At the same time, I have cut up some mushrooms sliced mushrooms there are shiitake mushrooms i cut up this the roots but i also chop them thin slice and throw it back to the soup because they're delicious and the rest of the mushrooms i cut them thinly that looks like this now what we wanted to do while that's waiting to boil i will also add chu chow chili oil Sauce balikam kiki get them in any Asian store. I will put they're not so hot. Just put a little spice. So I put one tablespoon. Mix them to the soup stock. And I also I will also add slices of ginger to give it a bit of flavor. Just about like this, three or four thin slices is good enough.
Now while I'm waiting for that to be boiled, I'm going to slice some of these chives and throw it in there. Technically I would be using spring onion, but because I don't have spring onion, I would put some spring onion, slice them thinly, and drop it into the soup stock because it creates much more flavor with spring onion. Whereas the chives, it's just become a garnish in this case, and coriander. But with spring onion, I would actually put a lot in the stock and some on garnish on the finishing part. How do you know when a dumpling is cooked? You actually wait to see the dumplings float on top of the water or on top of the soup stocks. Then you know it's cooked. If it's still sitting at the bottom, then you know it's still not cooked. So we've got 16 pieces in there. And I'll wait for it to boil. And usually, it's probably only, it will only take about two, three minutes. Especially, you only throw the dim dumplings inside when the, when the soup's base is actually boiling. When you see the dumpling floats like this one, I would normally leave it for about another minute to make sure that the pork is cooked. See, I'm going to scoop some of these out now. I've scooped all the dumplings out and I have actually put them in a separate container. Some will go into, back into the soup, some we will just eat it by itself and we will actually dip it with this yummy seasoning soy sauce for dumplings only. That, this is a very special sauce and what I'll do is I'll add extra ginger, slices of ginger to add spice to the sauce. Now. Um, with this one, with the stocks boiling, I would put the mushroom, shiitake mushroom. And maybe I would then add back the noodles. So it's hot. I'll add back the buckwheat noodles. Normally it's spring onion. Some of this coriander. Mm -hmm. 